All right, so in the spirit of Valentine's Day today, I thought I would share with you a cool 3D trick for creating those all too common um, metallic balloons you see um, pretty much on any holiday, but specifically on Valentine's Day, those heart-shaped, uh, really kind of cool metallic balloons. And there's actually a way to create those pretty realistically in Photoshop from scratch using the 3D features in Photoshop CS5 Extended. So I've gone ahead and started by creating a document and I've got a path already in the shape of a heart as you can see right here. And over in my layers, I've already got some elements in place as well. I have a background layer that will be the base color of the heart balloon. And I have some text that will also be on the balloon itself, actually here on the face of the balloon right there. It's already positioned and everything. What I need to do is actually go and combine the text layer and the color layer here into a single layer, but to maintain the original layers in the event I need to go back to the beginning. I'm just going to go ahead and just merge these by holding down the Option key and then going into the pull-out menu of the Layers panel and choosing Merge Visible, which creates a copy of the merged layers. Rather than uh, flattening the entire document, it's just a created a merged copy. So now, I'm going to go and select my path here, my heart-shaped path, and now I have my layer containing my color and text element. Simply go under the 3D menu and go to uh, Repousse and choose Selected Path. Now in here it's going to go ahead and uh, apply an extrusion to that uh, heart-shaped element, as you can see right here. But we don't need the extrusion in the traditional sense as we're looking at it right here. And so we're just going to go into the Extrude section in the Repousse panel here and set that to zero. Now what we are going to do is increase the Inflate setting down here. Go down here to where it says Inflate. And for the angle, while I've got it sitting at an angle here, I'm going to increase it, and you can see it inflates the front face of that graphic. So you can see it's kind of going on right there. But the problem is it's not doing it to the back half of it. So we'll just simply change the sides uh, menu here from front to front and back. So then it gives me that nice inflation there. Now I can increase the strength here just to kind of inflate it even more so. This is going to be like a balloon, so it, we need to know that it needs to inflate and be really bulging like that. Now of course the text is reading backwards on the back side, but that's okay because we're just going to merely be concentrating on looking at the front of it. So I'll bring it back to the home position there and there is my inflated graphic based on that shape. So again, we've set the depth to zero and increased the inflation and strength settings and make sure that the front and back is set to give us that inflated look. All right, so again, hit that home position before you hit OK, and we'll just go ahead and click OK here, and there we go. Now, let's um, mess around with the surface properties here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my 3D panel, which uh, is located under the window menu. Go to 3D, and it will open up the 3D panel here. And what we need to look at here is the lighting situation. So if we go over here, we can see in the lights section, we have three infinite lights that are um, a, attached to this file right now. What I'm going to do is go over to the materials section and we are looking at the front inflation of our graphic element and that's really all we're going to be seeing in this case. So um, with the front inflation highlighted here at the top of the materials list, I'm going to go down here to the gloss and shine settings and let's go ahead and boost those up to around 75 for each one. You can see that the lighting changes thus giving us a more uh, glossy sheen to it. Probably could even increase that even more so. In fact, I'm going to increase it up to 85 for both settings there. There we go. And I'm going to increase the reflection setting here to around 25. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to add another light to this graphic element. So we're going to go back to the light section. And in addition to the infinite lights we've already got on this object, we're going to add an image-based light. So I'm going to highlight that element, go down here to the new menu and choose new image-based light adds a new element in there. Down here, a little bit lower in the panel, we're going to go where it says Image, and I'm going to click on this little folder icon and choose New Texture. Now the texture, I'm going to go ahead and leave it the same size as my working document. This document I'm working in right now is in fact 9 by 9 inches at 100 pixels per inch. We'll go ahead and leave this the same size and click OK. So all I did was create the document. I need to go in there and edit it. So I'm going to go back in that same menu and this time choose Open Texture. Now inside here, we can um, determine how this image-based light is going to affect the image by what we introduce into this file. Now I'm going to keep it more of a 
simple or an easy sense here in that I'm not gonna use an actual image, rather I'm just gonna use some different shapes. So let's start by, actually I'm gonna make my background 50% gray. I'm gonna go ahead and get, um, get the background fill with 50% gray there. Then I'm going to draw a oval shape kind of in the middle of this layout here. And I can go ahead and uh, put this on a new layer, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill this element with black. And then you can see it's giving me that, um, I've just got a simple black oval shape over a gray background. I'm gonna close this document and save the changes. And now you can see what's going on here. This image-based light is um, wrapping around the object in a rather interesting way. Now, if I go into the 3D panel here and select my 3D light rotate tool with the image-based light selected here, I can click and drag and move around this light element and you can see what's going on here. It's giving me a very interesting uh, appearance on the surface there. And I can move this around just to get a very different look, something like that. And again, it's something you can play around with. You can see the graphic element right here really helps you rotate it and really kind of get it in place. What you can do also, actually I'm gonna go over here and increase its intensity. Let's bring it all the way up to one. Makes it a little bit brighter. But what you can do is again, go back inside of that file and introduce other elements. Maybe I will add a soft fade on this side of the graphic. So I'm just gonna use a radial gradient on a new layer. I've just added a gradient on this side. And if I close and save that, we'll see some soft edges occurring on that lighted element. So you can see there are softer edges versus harsher edges on that graphic element. So it just gives you a tremendous amount um, uh, tremendous more control over the um, behavior of the lights. In fact, I'm gonna make that light a little bit brighter. And this is, again, this is the beauty of this. You can go back in here and make these adjustments. I'm gonna make that gray background a little bit lighter. So the light will appear a little bit brighter as well. So let's close that and save it. So there we go. So again, well, I can go in here and I can edit the light, really go crazy with it and have a lot of fun with it, but I think you get the idea. All right, now here's the really um, kind of a cool part about this. The thing about those uh, particular types of balloons that we're right, trying to recreate here is that they always have those edges that are always kind of got like where the folds are to really give that um, look. We're actually gonna use and paint with 3D. So go over here into the 3D panel once again. And in the scene uh, section, which is the first tab up here at the top, go down to where it says paint on. You can see a paint on menu here. I'm gonna change this from diffuse, which is the default, to bump. Now, I'm gonna go over here and grab my brush tool and painting with a relatively small brush. And we'll just get like a small brush here and set the shape dynamics. Now I'm actually going to use the fade section because I don't I want each stroke to have a certain distance on it. But I also want it to fade on its own naturally. So I'm just gonna set, start the fade by setting it at around, well, let's do 75. And I'm just gonna start and just paint directly on my object. Now when I do this, it's gonna ask me to create a bump texture file by default. So I'm just gonna click OK, and I'm just gonna make it the same size as that document. And in case you're curious, it's over here in the materials section right here. We're still working on the front inflation. You can see where it says bump, and now there's a new document there. So now I'm just gonna paint on the object. And let's actually make that stroke a little bit shorter. I've got it, the fade at 75, let's put it back down to 60. And I'm just going to start around the edges and just paint inward and just add those strokes. Now you can see as I do this, it's interacting with the light that is shining on this object. And this is ultimately resulting in those folded edges that you typically see on these types of balloons. And I'm just gonna continue to do this all the way around. You can see the bump is actually happening as I paint. So we're doing this interactively. It's really kind of cool. Now, if that bump seems a little harsh, again, I can go in here in that bump setting and simply drop that to maybe say 0.5 so the bump isn't quite as much. There we go. And now I can continue to paint and just add those little elements right there. It just helps give the, um, the balloon itself, the shape, that much more dimension. So as you, as you would expect, you would see these folds just kind of creasing around the area here. Let's just, just kind of dab this around in here. And again, I could just spend all day just going nuts, just 
painting in these strokes, but you can see as the more I add, the more dimension is getting added to this. And even after I've do, done this, I've painted these strokes in here, it's looking pretty good. I can go in here and modify the positioning of these lights again. So I can change the position and notice as I do how it changes over those different creases that I just painted on here. Really kind of interesting. I'm also going to go over here and maybe repositioning these infinite lights because they did position themselves by default, but just to get some more dramatic lighting on my surface here, I'm going to go over here and just move around each one. And what I'm doing is simply highlighting each light element and then using the 3D light tools here just to rotate them and get a different perspective. I'm actually going to add a fourth infinite light here and rotate it around so we get a nice sheen on this lower side here. Yeah, see, see, I'm really def kind of defining this on, on the lower uh, right area here, those uh, creases and everything like that, yeah, looking really good. So again, just tweaking the positioning of the lights, just trying to get the best possible positioning to make it that much more dramatic. And I can continue to take my brush and paint more streaks in here. It looks pretty good. And again, the intensity of these lights can also be modified as well. So you notice if I turn one off, notice the dimensioning gets that much more. And this is another thing. You can turn these lights on and off by default just to see if they make any dramatic change by turning them on or off. In this case, I'm going to boost the intensity of this one to maybe say 1.2. And let's maybe make that gloss a little bit more. Whole bunch of different possibilities with this. And if you just keep continue on, you can actually come up with something like this. As you can see, I've carried on the very same principles here using the same bump brush to give the, the element some dimension. Added a little bit of a tail on it and the string just to give it an overall realistic look, but different ways you can take advantage of 3D by giving it dimension by just painting directly on the object. And again, just like the uh, previous one, if I grab my 3D tool and rotate this element, you can see what's going on here. As I move it, the lights are interacting with it. We're getting a much more realistic edge to it. Now, it doesn't look right if I rotate it all the way around, of course, because we only affected the front side of the graphic, but that's okay because that's all I'm going to see in my final product as you see right here. So a lot of interesting things to do with the uh, 3D for Valentine's Day or any holiday really. So just um, a matter of experimenting, playing, playing around with it and having fun. And I hope everyone has a very happy Valentine's Day.